Well, it's not this. I love my new iPad. It does a ton of cool things, but will it blend? That is the question. Doesn't quite fit in the jar, but I can take care of that. No! I knew I could get the iPad in a Blendtec Total Blender. I think I'll press the iBlend button. The video is unlike most videos you're accustomed to. It's a touchcast, which means that when I pop up, the one of these new style graphics you can interact with it just like you would the internet the graphic here is actually a YouTube video that will tell you more about touchcast so what is blended learning well to find out let's start with the leader on the subject INACOL, the International Association for K through 12 online learning now INACOL was formed in 2003 through many conferences gatherings and meetings as a response to the overwhelming need for an organization focused on virtual schools and blended learning you can visit their website here now, Inacol defines blended learning as the best features of traditional schooling with the advantages of online learning to deliver personalized, differentiated instruction across a group of learners. Students in formal blended learning educational programs learn online part of the time, yet have the benefit of face-to-face -face instruction and supervision to maximize their learning and to best fit their own needs. So let's look at some other videos that define blended learning. Uh, just click on the graphic in order to interact with it. So here's one. Here's another one, and yet another. Inical also defines four models to implement blended learning. First up, the rotational model. So let's dive into the station rotation model. This diagram of the model is based on how KIPP, LA, and Power Academy implements the station rotation model in their curriculum. You can learn more about their blended learning profile on the Clayton Christensen Institute website. This blended learning model is a rotation model. The station rotation model occurs only on site at school. A student's schedule in the station rotation model is either fixed or determined by the teacher's discretion. While this model occurs on site at school, students in this model go through different stations or learning modalities within their respective classes. As far as logistics of each station, at least one station is online learning, while the other stations could include small group or full class instruction, tutoring, projects, or paper and pencil assignments. The station rotation model is different from the individual rotation model in that students actually rotate through all the stations instead of only being in certain ones. There are a couple of things to keep in mind. While this diagram shows a rotation among the three stations, online instruction to teacher-led instruction to collaborative activities and stations. These can be done in a different order if you so decide. You can even have a different number of stations. It doesn't have to be three. Another item worth mentioning is that this model does allow the option for classes to rotate all together as a whole class or even separately in smaller groups. Moreover, let's just go ahead and define the following labels. Online learning offline learning, and these are the blue colored circles, and of course, the teacher. Finally, keep in mind that this is the symbol for paraprofessionals, such as teacher aides. Next, we have the flex model. So let's talk about the flex model. Here is a diagram of the flex model. This is based on how the San Francisco Flex Academy implements the Flex model into their curriculum. You can learn more about their blended learning profile on the Clayton Christensen Institute website. Now learning is done primarily online here in this model. Location-wise, it does occur on-site in multiple classrooms. With the variety of face-to-face -face support from minimal support in some cases to more in others, students are placed in an individually customized, fluid schedule as they go through the different learning modalities. Before discussing how Udemy projects and labs may look in a flex model, let's review the basic labels. Here you have online learning. Here is the offline learning. 
See how teachers are spread throughout the different learning modalities. Finally, see how the paraprofessionals play a role within the study and collaborative space. In the a la carte model, here is a diagram of the a la carte model. This is based on how the Quakertown Community School District implements the a la carte model in their curriculum. You can learn more about their blended learning profile on the Clayton Christensen Institute website. First of all, this blended model was formerly known as a self-blend model. In the a la carte model, students will take one or more online courses. Courses are both on-site at school and off-site outside of school. In this model, there is a huge element of self-paced learning. Keep in mind that this is not a whole school experience, which makes it different from the enriched virtual model. I would like to point out some of the basics of this diagram. Right here is the online learning labels. And this occurs both on-site and off-site. Here's the offline learning at school. And here are your teachers, which in this scenario are online teachers. In many cases, the online teacher is also the same face-to-face -face teacher at school. And finally, the established virtual model. So let's start with the enriched virtual model. Here's a diagram of the model. This is based on how a school called Academy implements the enriched virtual model in their curriculum. You can learn more about their blended learning profile on the Clayton Christensen Institute website. Here are some basic details about the enriched virtual model. It is a model that is based on self-paced learning. Online learning occurs both on-site and off-site. Students are seldom on-site at school in the enriched virtual model. This feature makes it different from the flipped classroom model where students are mostly on-site at school. This model is also a whole school experience, which makes it different from the a la carte model in spite of its many similarities. I would like to point out some things about the diagram. Keep in mind that this shows online learning, this other label shows offline learning, and here's the face-to-face -face instructor that is available the few times that students attend the school campus. In most cases, the face-to-face -face instructor is the online teacher. In that way, students will have access to a single teacher of record for their courses even though they seldom attend the brick-and-mortar campus. So which model would you like to use? Let us know by answering the poll within the graphic. So you know what's one of the major lessons you can learn from all these resources? Blended learning can look a whole bunch of different ways. The key is to finding the right mix and model that works for you. Of course, to find that model, it could always be helpful to see some successful ones. So the first one is from Revere High School. The next example is from Aspire Schools. The next example is an article about a bunch of schools that have implemented blended learning. The next example is from Brady High School. And last but not least, the final example is from Nexus Academy. And of course, if you want some blended learning research, here it is. Just click on the graphic to learn more. And of course, who doesn't love their references?